So I have the spread laid out here. Um, while I was shuffling the cards, I feel like this month, it is all about the uh, learning process, okay? And I feel like for some of you, it's um, on the practical front, learning new skills, learning new, new ways of doing things, such as at work, or if you have like new projects that you're working on, new endeavors, even learning a new uh, new sports, learning how to you know get yourself in shape, learning how to do go to the gym and use uh, proper equipment or use exercise uh, proper exercise routine. So there's a lot of learning in all areas of your life. So it feels to me like you're almost like you know this. Um, this rubber band and you're being stretched in different directions so you have to accommodate and you have to adapt to new environment but at the same time you have to find the the best and the most effective way for you to do something so sorry I have this screen opening up so it is all about learning and I feel as well for many of you this is kind of like growing and learning in your emotional life as well okay so let me just uh, relay two of the main messages that are coming out and then we'll go into the rest of the the reading um, the first message is you know how you guys have a habit of rushing around all the time and then you guys I also feel like um, when the pressure is on that's when you produce your best work so you might leave things and procrastinate and leave things to the the very last possible second and then when the the pressure is really on and you're stressed out that's when the 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 genius ideas come to you and that's when you're operating at your best and that's when the creative juices start flowing you feel inspired you feel that adrenaline rush and you get your work done and the work is like high quality work but it, it takes that pressure, it takes that, you know, something to, to like light up under you for you to find your center, for you to get, you know, um, spiritual messages even to help you through um, these, to, to kind of blast through these creative blockages, okay? So the advice overall for this month is, in fact, for you to slow down and think about what you're doing. Okay, so think about, first of all, what is your objective? What are you trying to achieve? Are you trying to um, broaden your knowledge base? Are you trying to cram for a test? Are you trying to finish an, uh, an essay within the deadline time frame? Are you trying to be top of your class? Are you trying to accumulate long-term lasting knowledge? What is your objective? What are you trying to do? Because it seems to me as if there are a gazillion things that you're trying to achieve. And when you're not really clear about what your objectives are and you're not able to prioritize, if they're just, you know, scattered, rather than ranking them, okay, first priority, I want to be smart. Second priority, I want to pass this exam. Third priority, I want to, you know, write this uh, essay and before the deadline. So... Rather than having a bunch of things that you're trying to do and juggling all at the same time, you want to be smart about it and you kind of want to line them up and prioritize, learning to triage them and learning to prioritize what's most important, what's, you know, secondary and, and, and so forth, okay? And so what I'm feeling is it's a really good month for you to make checklists for yourself so that you don't forget things. It's also important for you to prioritize and lay down what you are trying to achieve rather than juggling multiple projects or rather than, you know, um, burning the midnight oil working through projects. You want to make sure you carve out adequate time during the day to kind of sort things out and, and do things in a timely manner, not only when the pressure is on and you're, you know, um, rushing at the last minute. So go from this into the higher vibration into this okay this is organization get very very organized have folders and label the folders have you know binders label the binders and put appropriate things in the appropriate folder or binder and uh, going back to what I mentioned as well, this is a card of a student, okay? This is like somebody that's very fascinated with new ideas, new concepts, and they're really eager to apply 
these ideas and concepts into the practical world. This is also somebody who's like, uh, likes to play with their hands. They like to do things. They like to build things. They like to pull things apart and figuring out how uh, some things work. And they also like as well um, knowledge. Okay. And when it, when we have this page of pentacles in the picture, it's heavily about study, studying something, learning something, compartmentalizing information and telling yourself, you know, here's what I learned today. It's really cool. But where does it go? Does it go in the trivia pile or is it applicable for some type of uh, important um, knowledge that I need to store away for a later date? So I feel like many of you are getting bombarded with a ton of information it's information and you need to consolidate your knowledge you need to put all the pieces together and figuring out you know how does this piece of knowledge fit in with the other so it seems like that's what it is you're kind of like doing things out of order so the first thing should be this here's this new thing I'm gonna put it into my pile and then I need to sort out my pile and try to, you know, arrange the information so that it has a logical order. So this is the way we're supposed to be doing things. However, you're all like backwards, okay? So Aquarius, it would behoove you to be a little bit more organized so that you can consolidate knowledge, okay? Let's aim for this transition. And you need to slow down. A lot of the times when you slow down, it allows your mind to work. Your mind's kind of like a computer. It's always working. It's always turning. So when you find yourself stuck and you're like, I don't really know what to do. How do I answer this question? Or how do I, you know, arrive at this answer? Or how do I solve this problem? You need to kind of slow down and look at the facts. And when you're slowing down and you're looking at the facts, it allows your mind to kind of search through um, all the data from the past. The last time you encounter a situation uh, that is similar in nature and the last time that you encounter something that is, you know, um, almost like similar to this current situation so that it can draw up all of those other pieces of information and to retrieve something that's meaningful so that you can work off of that and to use that as a template so that you can arrive at your solution. So I feel like your mind needs to go through the process of consolidation, uh, of knowledge consolidation. And it can only do so if you are putting information in the right place and also consolidation, consolidating information in a rightful manner. Okay. So I feel a very, very strong student vibe. I feel a very strong research vibe as well. And it's going to serve you well if you do things in a methodical manner. And your mind works so fast that you're jumping to conclusions, okay? Remember how this was all backwards? You're jumping to conclusions, and you might be jumping to the wrong conclusions if you're not careful. So it's really important for us to kind of slow down a little bit and try to figure out what course of action to take, as well as, you know, how to store information, how to retrieve information. And so this is going on, I feel for many of you, in your work environment. You might be doing some training program. You might as well be thrust into a new work environment. And there's a lot of work just piled on that needs to be done. So somebody might have left in, um, on bad terms with that company. You come in and you don't start with a clean slate, no. There's already work that you need to kind of hit the ground running and you're going in there kind of like at point blank and you're like, OK, what do I do? How do I continue these cases? What do I do with all of these things that are piled? All these cases, all these applicants, all these clients, all of these files that are on my desk. What do I do? So you're knocking them one. Uh, you're knocking them out of the way one by one. But there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. And so, you know, be patient, be diligent with the process, don't rush ahead and handle each case with care, okay? Because what um, 
might be a solution to one situation might not be applicable to another all right um let me talk about on the love front because i feel like aquarius you're going through a major emotional growth spurt major emotional growth spurt and um what i feel is it's a little bit uncomfortable for me honestly to say this because let's just put it this way this is a card it's the hermit and the energy of the hermit is somebody who's kind of like a scientist right they're very detached and they they kind of look at things through the lens of a, a detached observer through the lens of um kind of like looking at human interactions um the the, the human that's looking at the ant colony it's a scientist observing what the little people are doing observing how social interactions happen but also you know how life happens in a very very detached manner and this is the way that you have always kind of approach relationships overall very detached very analytical very analytical and i feel like the way that love hits you it's not gradual like other signs where you know you they meet somebody attractive and they're like hmm and um they kind of keep that person on the back burner and then the next time it happens they run into that person again it reinforces the relationship so it's like for other signs it's an ongoing process you know you run into each other you strike conversation like you might talk the first time for five minutes if you like them the second time you might make excuses to you know get to know them better talk for 10 minutes and the next time talk for half an hour and the next time ask them out on a date so that's how normal people and the other signs kind of do it especially the earth signs they're very consistent and like the taurus virgo and capricorns for you guys and especially for other air signs it's sort of like, you know, playing it cool. I'll see you when I see you. I'm not going to go out of my way to make that effort to, you know, get to know you, to talk to you a little bit more. And deep down, you're like, if it's meant to be, it's going to be. I don't need to put in that extra effort to show I'm interested. And then I also feel like you get a little bit of a thrill out of observing somebody from afar, figuring out, you know, do they have any friends? Are they, um, you know, uh, introverted or extroverted? Are they social or antisocial? Do they have particular uh, quirks? How do they interact with people? So it's almost like the detachment is what makes it very exciting for you. It's like living in your head, dreaming of that fantasy, that ideal relationship. But in the meantime, all of it is happening in your head. It's not really happening in real life. So the relationship is not really taking off. It's just the fantasy is in your head okay and I feel like in terms of growth and learning when it comes to the emotional front I feel for many of you you've gone through a few relationships possibly two very significant relationships where the relationship partner are no longer in the picture and with this two of wands I feel like the, the two people resembled each other. So look back at your two most significant relationships. For some reason, I feel like the people are very similar, are almost the same. One is definitely higher functioning, which might be the most recent one or the current one. And then the other one was, you know, very stubborn. And I'm looking at this bolt that's keeping that um, that one kind of um, standing so that's somebody from your past and I feel like it's somebody who is very strict very very stubborn kind of a stick in the mud and not very adventurous and I feel like you know there were a lot of issues when it comes to um, doing things as a couple because you want somebody that you can grow with and the other person kind of held you back the other person might not have wanted the relationship. They might not have been ready or, you know, just the timing was off and it, it just, you couldn't grow with the person. The way that they, they, they were, you could not grow with them. So they could have been very deeply um, 
I want to say like retrenchment where they're very resistant to change okay and I also feel like this person might have issues with you know working as a partner working as an equal partner or being in a relationship with you in particular because you are so independent that they feel threatened and they feel like no you know the Aquarius person is gonna leave me so I, I feel like you're exam re-examining or really examining your relationships and you're like why are these patterns repeating some of you you might have been in one long distance relationship for a long time it didn't work out and then the new person it's the same long distance relationship and you're just like why am I stuck with long distance relationships and then for others you're with one person who's emotionally unavailable because this is a card of a relationship where one person's not in the picture so they could be physically there but emotionally unavailable and you're like I was in a relationship where the man, the the person was unavailable and now I'm in the same relationship with a different person and the, they're not as well you know not available emotionally and I also feel married people falling for somebody who's not available and then now falling again for somebody who's not available so we have a lot of cycles here that need to be broken and you have to kind of understand what it is that you're attracting and why these patterns or these cycles are happening to you why are you living this you know groundhog day over and over and over again in the love sector what exactly is happening and how do you break from it so that you can sail away so what I feel is kind of like the problem not so much the problem but the energy what I feel happening here is this I feel for many of you there has been a uh, recent relationship that has ended okay the lovers in the reverse usually indicates um, third party interfering in a relationship either the person that you were involved with had another um, lover or you had some another lover but it can also indicate a situation where chemistry is really really strong and and great between the two of you like physical chemistry sexual chemistry but you have zero compatibility zero compatibility and when that happens it is what it is how do you build with another person when your priorities are not lined up right how do you start anything plan anything with another person when you're not on the same page and if it's only you know uh, physical gratif gratification or sexual gratification that you're getting from this relationship how can it progress so you've wasted a lot of time I feel barking up the wrong tree when it comes to love Bar uh, possibly getting involved with the wrong people when it comes to love and not being not really taking the time to you know ask yourself what am I looking for what am I trying to achieve so you're not really consolidating the information that you're supposed to learn from each of your relationship when we don't learn things cycles tend to repeat if you don't learn how to manage your money every few years or so you're gonna find yourself in dire strait financially right you're gonna find your um, credit score diminishing you're gonna find your bank account in the red and you're gonna find yourself in, in vicious cycles right that's because you're not learning financial management likewise when it comes to love if you're not really sure what qualities am I looking for what exactly do I want out of a relationship do I want fun if you're only looking for fun and you expect a relationship it seems like there's a mismatch right and then on the other hand if you're looking for a relationship you want to build something with another person and you're looking for people who are really exciting and fun and but they have zero compatibility with you 
then what exactly are you looking for? Are your needs, are the things that you're looking for and the things that you want, are they in alignment with each other? Are they matching up? Because it seems like they're not and that's why these cycles are repeating. I feel for some of you, there is an immense, immense sense of missing somebody, being away from somebody physically thinking about them, wondering about them, um, possibly looking for them on social media, stalking them, um, wondering what they're up to, you know, staying up really late at night, texting and communicating um, over like text messages, emails, whatever the, the method is. But I feel like, you know, it's like staying up in the night and really missing somebody. And there's almost a sense of immense geographical distance between the two of you. I feel like you are thinking about somebody and there's a huge age difference. I usually think of the hermit as like an older person. And then we also have the emperor here, which is indicating to me uh, an older person, a boss, a supervisor, somebody that you might be drawn to, somebody who is in a position of power. And then the hermit is somebody who's older, wiser, somebody who's very... They're saying steady hands, so somebody whose hands don't shake when they're nervous or when they're put under a lot of pressure. They're just so um, they're just so calm. So it's actually not surprising that you would be drawn to somebody like that because your energy is very nervous. Um, not that you're nervous and you know you have stage fright and you're insecure. But your energy is very kinetic. It's very like, um, I want to say, it's constantly moving. It's in motion. So you would be drawn to someone who's very, very still and steady. And, you know, Virgo comes to mind. They're very skilled. They have good manual dexterity. They work well under pressure. They don't really brag about their accomplishments unless they have a lot of Leos, um, Leo placement with their planetary placement. And they don't really, um, they're great under pressure. They're very, very um, level-headed. And also, a lot of the Earth signs too, um, Capricorns even, Capricorns are amazing under pressure. Scorpios are also amazing under pressure. And I feel like Taurus as well. So what I feel here is overall, you're missing somebody, you're away from somebody, estranged from someone, or geographically just separated from someone and you're thinking about them heavily. The other person I feel is also thinking about you if you are uh, dealing with someone who's older the older person is definitely thinking about you, wondering if you're okay. And um, I feel like you're doing this and it's, it's, it's painful. It's a difficult process and you're going to try to move away from it, okay? And I feel like you're stuck between a, a rock and a hard place where you can't really... Uh, wipe yourself of the memories of that person. So you're burying yourself in your work situation. You're trying to, you know, like, if love is not working for me, for whatever reason, I'm going to bury myself in work. And I'm going to make myself, you know, so successful. It's almost like becoming a workaholic, not by choice, but because you're tired of these relationships not working out. It's a very frustrating energy that I'm feeling. You have a lot of things you want to get off your chest. You have a lot of things you want to get off your chest, but it feels very lonely. Like you, you might not have a person you can vent to. The people that you're venting to, they lack an innate sense of being able to understand you. So you're telling them something and, you know, they might be the best people in the world, but they cannot slip themselves into your shoes to really understand and really comprehend what you're dealing with. And I feel like that's the most frustrating thing ever because air signs has this innate need to want to be able to connect with other people. And when you're talking to someone and they're kind of like zoning in and out, you always know if they're faking it, like faking 
the attention or faking the fact that they're listening to you, you always know. You're not going to call them out on it, but if they cannot relate to you on that level where they understand why you're hurting, they understand why you want to vent, or they understand why it's so difficult for you, it's like, it's very frustrating. It can feel very lonely. So I feel like this is what's happening. You've got something that's weighing heavily on you, relationship issues. And you're trying to, you know, distract yourself with other things or you're waiting for a relationship to get better. You're waiting, waiting, waiting. And in the meantime, you want to vent. But it seems like the people around you are not able to sympathize, empathize or relate okay so relatability you're also growing emotionally you're trying to figure out what is working for you and what's not and i feel like you know these two past relationships if they if one is already done and the other one is still around then you're going to try it's like getting a second chance where you're like okay what did i do wrong the last time and what do I need to do right this time? Which is great because you're learning emotionally what is appropriate and what's not. So if the last relationship you were too distant, this relationship you're going to try to be more available to your partner. If they're complaining or if they're distancing themselves, then you're going to try to be a lot more emotionally available. If the last relationship they were too controlling, and you kind of um, took off without telling them, hey, stop controlling me, then in this relationship, you're going to tell them, I need you to back off a little bit. I, I feel like there is some massive control issues. Control issues. The emperor is greatly about control. The six of swords is greatly about control as well. One person kind of like taking charge and steering the direction of another person's life, okay? So if someone was controlling and you never, you know, said anything about it this time, you're not going to take it lying down. You're going to tell them, stop controlling me. Let me do my own thing. Let me, you know, have my own plans. Let me manage my own money. So I feel like you're growing. You're telling people how you want to be treated and you're telling people what you expect and you're learning from the past. You know, this didn't work last time, so I'm going to do it better. And that's going to be really good for you, communicating these thoughts and, you know, not keeping things so bottled up. Because oftentimes, if you have relationship issues, the person that you're mad at or you should be talking to is actually the person you don't want to, right? But in order to move things along, you're just going to need to talk to them. And so what I feel here is I feel like you're dealing with a really, really stern love interest or a relationship partner older than you or somebody who is in a position of authority and it seems as if it's like where do we go there might be people interfering in the relationship there might be gossip and rumors there might be you know social expectations so if you're dealing with somebody like this and you're trying to build a relationship with them they have trust issues they want to see solid concrete evidence before they can trust that they will invest in you. And then likewise, when work is so prominently, you know, um, visible in this spread, I feel like it might even be somebody at work. It might be this situation where you're offering them something and they're afraid to take up on the offer because of what people might think. You know, because of their status, because of their position, because they might be somebody that's uh, lording power over you. They might be uh, a person in a position of power. It might be a work situation. So there's a lot of um, nuances here. And if they are offering something to you, if they're offering you something, offering you to go on a date, let's go get coffee, let's go meet up over the weekend, let's hang out. You're also very trepidatious. It could be because you just got out of a relationship and the other person is, it's like too fast, too soon. I don't know what to do. I'm not done yet. I'm still wounded. I, I need to heal. I don't really want this offer, but it's coming in 
nonetheless. And it is a very solid offer. It's something that you can trust and you can build upon, but you've got a lot of things that you need to release and you've got a lot of things that you need to sort out, Aquarius. And so, I don't know, it just feels a little bit heavy to me. Let me pull out a few cards to clarify, okay? So the other thing I want to mention is, seems like there's travel coming in for you guys in the month of June. This is greatly about long distance travel, okay? So this, this is not just like driving across state lines. This is like taking the plane, traveling by sea, possibly going to a place with a lot of water associated with it. Traveling, and it, it, you're not doing it by yourself. You're doing it with other people, I feel. It could also be a work-related trip a learning opportunity or something that is very uh, value adding and very skills inducing or enhancing. So I feel like you're going to be learning so much this, uh, this month. And there's a lot of people that you're going to really admire. They're like top notch people in their field. Okay. They're experts and they're giving you really valuable insights. So they're giving you Proper guidance, advice, and valuable insights. I'm going to see here. Let me clarify the lover. Who is represented here with the lovers? Okay. So, first of all, you've moved on. This is a card about no contact, okay? Messages received, not responded to. Messages that are um, kind of like thrown at you, you're not really giving it the time of day. We have the death card, which is the card of Scorpio. And uh, you might have been dealing with a Scorpio, or they're moving on, or you're moving on. So either way, I feel like a breakage in communication. We also have a fire sign here, a Sagittarius, an Aries, or a Leo. The Queen of Wands usually indicates a very, um, it, it's male or female because the, the energies here are not gender specific. It usually indicates someone who's very popular, someone who's um, very like dynamic. They want to, you know, move on. They want to experiment. And I feel like there was a relationship that really held you back. It didn't give you the proper impetus to really expand, to really grow, to really learn. So you, f you feel once again, that, you know, you were being held down by the relationship, so you had to move on. And I also feel communication coming back in with this Ten of Swords, but it is not responded to. So there's, like, lack of communication. Um, so that's with the lovers. Let me see here the Page of Pentacles. This is a new offer. Is this love or is this work? Page of Pentacles. Love or work? Oh, we have love. Yep. Okay, be careful, Aquarius. So first of all, Page of Wands. Um, this is messages coming in from somebody who's very different from you. Okay, I usually think of this as a foreigner, like uh, somebody from a different land, someone who's quite exotic looking. And they're telling you, this is messages of fun. You want to go out? You want to go driving? You want to go sightseeing? Do you want to get ice cream? Do you want to go, you know, on a boat ride? Like something that is a little bit more outdoorsy, um, dynamic. And the the message is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be like, you know, uh, you want to no strings attached relationship with me? Something like that. And I feel you really like this person. So I'm not seeing a fire sign. I'm, I'm seeing more as an energy. And I have here the Nine of Cups. And when it's the Page of Pentacles as well as the Nine of Cups, it might be multiple offers, multiple people. This is a card about being inundated with a lot of choices, okay? And you're just like, some of you might have recently broken up with somebody and you're like, thank you, but no thank you. I'm, I'm still recovering. And then some of you might still be suspicious. Like, I don't know if I can trust these people. I don't know if I can let them in. So I feel like you're flattered, but you're not really sure. And then on top of that, I also feel with the Seven of Swords, this is sort of like, you could be as well entertaining both of these people 
you're in a place of um, overindulging and you're not being truthful and honest as well. Okay, so you have these two people. They're possibly younger and they, they want to, you know, have some fun and you might be juggling them both. So that's also a possibility here, Aquarius. And let me see. What advice do you have for the Aquarius people for love and relationship for this month? Seems like there's a lot going on. I would advise you to just focus on your work, honestly, and leave the relationships alone because it seems like something is kind of off with it, okay? You could be dealing with a Gemini. And a, um, hmm, let's see. There's a Gemini energy. If, oh, okay. You could be dealing with a Gemini here with the Nine of Cups. It's basically an overindulgent type of a situation. And it could be, you know, under the radar, like very clandestine. It's not seeing the light of day. And they have some things in their lives that they're not willing to turn their back on. It could be, once again, family. They might be in another relationship. They might not be ready for the full responsibilities of a love relationship as well, okay? So either way, um, here's just my suggestion. Career is going really, really well. All of this other stuff, just don't bother. Don't waste your time. This is what your guides are trying to tell you here. Look at the past. Look at your track record in the past. Look at your love relationship. And really look at patterns and cycles. Okay, it's it's really very important when we go through life to continuously aim to move forward, aim to break cycles, aim to not let things repeat. When things are repeating themselves, you have to ask yourself, what am I not learning? Why are these things happening? There are some things here that you're not really looking at the right way. And I, I feel like you kind of need to Take some time off and really slow down and really look at things the proper way. What the emperor is telling you to learn to make those difficult choices, okay? Um, the right choice is rarely an easy choice. But Aquarius, you have this internal compass. It's an internal moral compass. And not a lot of signs have it, but you do. You always know what's right. You always know what's wrong. And some of you, you make the wrong choices. And, you know, a few months later, you start kicking yourself. Like, why did I do that? Why did I mess up a good relationship? Why did I have, you know, so much intimacy issues? Why am I not letting that person in? So this is all about making the difficult choice. The right choices are usually difficult. So you need to make the right choice. You need to listen to your higher calling and you need to do things right. So if you're in a relationship and things are a little bit iffy or if you're with somebody you don't love, you need to make these difficult choices and maybe, you know, move away. Um, on top of that, work is going so well. Focus on this. Focus on building something stable and long lasting and you know has a lot of potential to grow this is where your energy needs to be focused and instead it's being scattered towards you know missing other people third party interference feeling stuck move away from it okay move away and just stop doubting it okay so i'm gonna leave it at that it's time for you to move on okay aquarius and uh, move to focus your energy on, on things that are concrete and tangible and that don't leave you wondering, what if? Okay, focus on this. So um, I wish you all the best, okay? And um, I hope this energy will clear up. And I hope whatever, whatever question you have, it seems like the answer is a yes. But you need to kind of like redirect your energy in a proper manner, okay? Work on building wealth, all right? Um, I wish you all the best. You know I love you guys, and thank you so much for consistently um, viewing the videos. So I, I really, really appreciate my Aquarius viewers, and I feel like, you know, maybe we have a strong resonance, so that's why there are more Aquarius views across the board every month. So I really appreciate that.